Hi, my name is Mactron. This will be my first video commentary for my channel. I have a physical disability with the shit's muscular dystrophy, and I'm a huge gamer, and I absolutely love playing Battlefield. And I thought this would be a perfect video to share for anyone who has a physical disability and her, who are seeking a way to be able to enjoy gaming again due to his or her physical limitations. And just a heads up, I use a machine for pulmonary support, and I'll try to speak as clearly as I can, and I hope the noise isn't too distracting for you. So here we go. On this video, I will show you what I used to help me play on the Xbox One, play Battlefield 4 using this device called the Kronos Max, that allows you to use almost any controller out there. Before I got my Xbox One, which I bought 8 months ago, I used the Kronos Max on my PS3 using the PS3 controller. I use the PS3 controller because it is the only controller my hands are accustomed to. As my muscular dystrophy progresses more and more, it has become more difficult to push many of the buttons on the controller. I have no ability to push either the R3, L3, and D-pad buttons, and sometimes I could push the R2 and L2 buttons when I needed to quickly push either the triangle or circle button for like switching to pistol or crouching and going prone I just couldn't do it quick enough it just took me too long to move my right thumb from the joystick and then push the button by the time I did sometimes I would already be dead if I was in the middle of a gunfight and the frustration of not being able to make the character run knife, hold breath and using the gadgets aside to the left and right d-pad buttons I was starting not to enjoy gaming anymore, but I love gaming and I didn't simply want to give up. So after doing some research on the internet, looking at a few options, I came across websites like Broadened Horizons and Litmus Gaming Access Solutions, and at one point thinking of having someone bought a controller for me, but I thought it would be too much of a headache to mess with. Looking on the Broadened Horizons website, I looked at the versatility box for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 and they wanted just way too much for it, like around $900. Then looking at the Litmus website, I saw their Switch Access pod and they wanted like 375 euros, which is like $500 here in the US. After a while I stopped looking for an alternative means of gaming controls on home and just played with what I had. I'm like, there has to be a cheaper way to having assistive gaming controls. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure the access pod and versatility box would be great for most people with other physical disabilities that are willing to pay for it to help them play their favorite console games, and that works for them. I'm just not willing to pay $500 or more to do it. Those prices were for the access pod and versatility box alone. And on top of that, you pay more money buying the switches and accessories. And the downside was that none of the newer gen consoles were supported by both devices. One day I happened to come across this website called ControllerMax.com and they have this device called the Kronos Max. This device works with any of your favorite controllers on PS4, Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. An example would be PS3 controller on Xbox 360, Xbox 360 controller on PS3, and vice versa on the other systems. The Kronos Max allows you to make custom macros, remap buttons, and use game packs such as Rapid Fire, Auto Spot, Hold Breath, and Easy Sprint. I personally don't use the game packs though. Basically, you can use the controller from a different console on another or the same controller on the same console. So, with the Kronos Max connected to my Xbox One, I'll be using the PS3 controller. To see if a particular controller you want to use will work with this device, check out controllermax.com forward slash manual forward slash compatibility list of controllers dot htm. I will also leave a link in the description below. Here's a look at my setup. The Kronos Max is connected to the Xbox One using a USB extension cable, which I recommend. I have the Kronos Max connected to my laptop the whole time using the program port on the side of the Kronos Max. Showing on my laptop is the GTuner Pro software. 
here's a closer look at the GTutor Pro software. Using their GTutor Pro software and the Vaxane plugin, you can assign keys in the controller layout to every button like if you were to use a keyboard. For additional controls, I then use three 3.5mm microlight switches that go into my Crick USB switch box that connects to my laptop. The switch box costs around $250. Also, the microlight switches cost $80 each, and I had two switches lying around, and I only had to buy one extra. I then positioned two switches next to each of my feet, clicking them with my big toes. And the third button goes right next to the right side of my chin. On this button, I used a 2.42mm diameter rod with 440 threading, bending the rod to the best position, using an alligator clip soldered to the other end of the rod, hooked to my Vipat breathing mask. The switch box comes with software called USB Keys 2. Within the software, you assign a keyword key to each button, which will correspond with the key assigned in Max A. The button labeled L goes to the switch on my right foot, and the button labeled F goes to the switch on my chin, and the button labeled K goes to the switch on my left foot. Depending on what game I'm playing, I assign the switches to other buttons on the controller now in max aim by simply moving the assigned keys of each button. When playing Battlefield 4, I use the switch labeled L, which is on my right foot. I use on the left stick, or known as the L3 button on PlayStation, is used for sprint and hold breath. And the switch labeled F, which is on my chin, I use on the right D-pad button for using the right gadget. And the switch labeled K, which is on my left foot, I also use on the left D-pad button for using the left gadget. I then use two voice recognition programs. One is Dragon Speak which I mainly use for computer navigation and for setting up G-Tutor and to initiate counter mode using the MaxAid plugin. And because Dragon Speak is too good at picking you up on the mic and it's more accurate, the other voice recognition program I use is Voice Activated Commands, Mac for short. It comes with a 14 day trial. After that, it costs $18. VAC is more customizable, allowing you to build your own profile for any software that uses keyboard commands. You can use your own words or phrases to issue a command to trigger an action. The features for VAC are that you can use multiple phrases to trigger an action. You can assign sounds or speech to each action. A sound or phrase will play for success when the command was recognized. It has a built-in sound recorder to record your own phrases when a command is recognized. Each action can have any number of keyboard commands, and each keyboard command can send any extended key, characters, key combinations, or mouse button clicks. And you can select actions from one profile and export them to an existing profile. I'll also leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. Here's what the VAT program looks like. Now go over to File, select Load Profile, and click the Battlefield 4 Profile. And real quick, I'll be going over what activation phrase and assign character keys I use under each command that's in the action description list. Also, some of the commands I'll go into extra detail of the other changes that were needed for that certain action. So, let's begin at the top with Grenade. Obviously, the activation phrase I chose to go with is Grenade, and the assigned key is G. And for Switch Weapon, the activation phrase I chose was Switch, and the assigned key is Y. And for Enemy Spotted, the activation phrase I chose was Spot, and the assigned key is A. And for Start Button, the activation phrase I chose was Start Button, and the assigned key is P. And for a view button, the activation phrase I chose was a view button. And the assigned key is Q. And for Xbox button, 
The activation phrase I chose was X menu, and the assigned key is tab. And for knife slash change view, the activation phrase I chose was change view and knife, and the assigned key is R. And for countermeasures, the activation phrase I chose was gadget, and the assigned key is G. And for attachment, the activation phrase I chose was attachment, and the assigned key is the up arrow. And for change fire mode, the activation phrase I chose was change fire mode, and the assigned key is the down arrow. And for crouch, the activation phrase I chose was crouch or take cover, and the assigned key is O. And for prone, the activation phrase I chose was go prone, and the assigned key is O. And I have the duration of milliseconds set to a thousand, about the time it takes to hold the crouch button to go prone. And for Conrose, the activation phrase I chose was Comrose, and the assigned key is A, and the duration in milliseconds is set to 1080, just enough time to hold the Comrose button for me to quickly select from the list. And for Use Weapon, the activation phrase I chose was Use Weapon, and the assigned key is Y, and the duration in milliseconds is set to 1000, about the time it takes to press and hold the button to pick up a weapon. And for arm imcom, the activation phrase I chose was arm device, and the assigned key is in, and the duration of milliseconds is set to 4800. About the time it takes to hold the button to arm or disarm the imcom or objective. So when I'm arming or disarming, I can readily defend myself, and I don't have to worry about holding down the arm button. For VAC Sweep, the activation phrase I chose was Disable VAC Mode, and under Special Functions where it says VAC Mode, is Sweep. And for VAC Listen, the activation phrase I chose was Enable VAC Mode, and under Special Functions where it says VAC Mode, is Awake. Those last two commands are so I can choose whether or not or what voice activated commands to listen for a command. So, that's all the commands I use for Battlefield 4 in VAC. Now I'm going to open the Kronos VAC G-Tutor Pro software. And go to Plugins and click Max Aim. And on the controller layout here, the buttons have keyboard character keys assigned to them. So when I say a command using voice activated commands, it would then press that character key that's on the back same controller layout that corresponded with the command in VAC, and the button on the controller would then be triggered. If I were to say grenade, VAC would then press the key character G, which is also on the left trigger button here. On the back same controller layout, is then pressed throwing a grenade for me. And if I were to say switch for switch weapon, VAC would then press the character key Y, which is also the Y button here on the controller layout, is then press switching weapons for me. And then if I was to say spot for enemy spotted, back when they press the character key A, which is also on the right trigger button here on the controller layout, is then press spotty enemy soldiers for me. And when I say crouch, back when they press the character key O, which is the B button here on the controller layout, is then press crouching my soldier for me. I'm sure that you get the idea. So basically, a command in VAC with an assigned character key to it correspond with the character keys I have assigned in the VAC save controller layout. The last bit of this video, I'm going to demonstrate playing Battlefield 4 with my setup. But first, I'm going to explain and show you how I set everything up with my computer. So the process of setting up my computer for me to be able to play on my Xbox One is that I first authenticate with the Xbox One controller because AU is flashing on the Kronos Vax. Wait till it turns zero. Disconnect the Xbox One controller. Then I connect the Bluetooth adapter. Then I turn on the PS3 controller. The PS3 controller now works on the Xbox One. 
There are plenty of YouTube videos and instructions at the Controller Max website on the authentication process. Right now you have to re-authenticate each time after the console has been turned off. Make sure in GTuner Pro go to Tools, Options, click the Device tab, and select the right output protocol for the right system, or set it to Automatic. I set mine to Xbox One. Then check mark the Automatic DualShock 3 Bluetooth pairing only if using a PS3 controller. And also make sure to get a Bluetooth adapter 2.0 or greater and it has EDR. And the last part is where I use Dragon Speech to set up the GTuner Pro software with a MaxSafe plugin for the Kronos Max. First I'm going to turn back on. And press the right control key to initiate it. Disable back mode. Wake up. Mouse grid. Nine. Eight. Eight. Six. Mouse right click. Click recording devices. Mouse grid. One. Five. Seven. One. Click. Click properties. Move mouse down. Click. Mouse left click. Drag mouse left. Stop. Press right. Press right. Click OK. Open G Tutor Pro. Click plugins. Click back save. Click enter capture mode. Go to sleep. Enable back mode. So that's pretty much how I set my computer up every time before each gaming session. And now the last thing is gameplay of me using my setup. Feel free to leave a comment below, tell me your thoughts, or ask any questions. And if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. And thanks for watching. Hey, you have just taken
gadget. Catch.
change you. Catch it. 